Dr. Rima, we're live. Welcome to the Dr. Rima Truth Reports. You are listening to the drumbeat of freedom and the heartbeat of truth. I'm Rima Ilebo, MD. I am the medical director of the Natural Solutions Foundation. And with me, as always, my co-host and co-trustee, Ralph Fusatola, JD. Good evening, Ralph. Good evening, Dr. Rima. It is a great pleasure to be here this evening. Well, this evening, it's not only a pleasure to be here, which it always is, but we are also honored. We have two luminaries with us. One of them is the president of the Natural Solutions Foundation, Major General Albert N. Stubblebein III, who tired, as many of you may know, as the commanding general of the U.S. Army Intelligence and Security Forces. Good evening. Good evening. And uh, thank you for uh, allowing me to be here. Well, you know, this is sort of interesting because General Byrd is not only the president of our foundation, he's also my husband. So when he says allowing me to be here, it is a bit tongue in cheek. (laughs) A little bit. And our guest tonight, our guest tonight is very, very special. He's special to us and he's also special to the world. Ambassador Mitsuhe Murata Uh, who served as Japan's ambassador to Switzerland, is with us tonight. And he is known as the conscience of Fukushima. He is a very special man who is willing to speak out about a danger that the world wishes to bury. A danger that disappears from television. It disappears from newspapers, it disappears from the media, but it doesn't disappear from the planet. It is Fukushima. And Fukushima, unfortunately, is the gift that keeps on giving, and a toxic, toxic gift it is. Good evening, Ambassador Morata. Uh, Good evening, Dr. Rima. Honored to Thank you. We are so to have you because you are a busy man and you are a man who is communicating with the world. And the question is, is the world listening? I wonder if you would um, begin by uh, telling us a little about why you are pleading for the honorable retreat of Japan from the Tokyo Olympic Games in 2020. That's a huge thing to ask a country to do, to back down, to uh, forego the economic benefits and the prestige of hosting an Olympics. Why are you suggesting that Japan retreat in an honorable way from hosting the 2020 Olympics? This is a very important problem and because uh, the world is forgetting the crisis, serious crisis emanating from Fukushima. Fukushima Daiichi is now poses global security issue. And I only refer to the Unit 4 problem. If the Unit 4 of the Fukushima Daiichi collapses by an earth, mega earthquake surpassing intensity 6 plus, then it could be the beginning of the ultimate catastrophe of the planet. You know, uh, uh, this Unit 4 contains 50 times more uh, cesium-137 than the Chernobyl. And uh, the lack of the sense of crisis is at the basis of the Tokyo Olympic Games. And so the the Tokyo Olympic Games also is based upon the assurance, untrue assurance, that the Fukushima Daiichi is under control. I find it both irresponsible and immoral to organize the Olympic Games in Tokyo when the government is predicting bigger earthquakes 
in the near future. And uh, with this uh, problem of the Unit 4, for which we can do nothing else but to pray that earthquakes do not take place, that will destroy the Unit 4. Now, the, uh, the press... Season. The press pretends that now that Unit 4 is being emptied by, uh, by workers in special suits of the, the rods, that there's no more problem, that everything is okay. So if a skeptic, and I, by the way, am very, very supportive of everything that you're saying. We have been, the Natural Solutions Foundation has been telling people the dangers since March 11th, 2011. But why, why would, uh, how would you speak to a skeptic who says, hey, they're emptying out the rods, they're doing something with them, everything seems to be fine, what are you worried about? How would you answer that? There is a very important initiative taken by very well-known Dr. Caldicott, who is the president of the Caldicott uh, Foundation. She, she has written a letter to the uh, president of the uh, International Olympic Committee, Mr. Bach. In this, in her letter, there is a description of the eventual dangers and actual dangers existing uh, in Tokyo where the Olympic Games is to be organized. And, and she asks, requests the sending to Japan of an independent neutral investigation committee to, uh, re uh, yes, to reassure the safety of Tokyo. And I believe that this request is uh, totally legitimate and it is, will be it's difficult not to respond to it. Indeed, Ambassador. You can uh, imagine. Uh, you can imagine the result of the investigation team because uh, this uh, uh, the uh, conclusion of the committee investigation committee could yes. be nothing else but no, because the situation is not under control. Indeed, it's not. And Ambassador, we were very pleased to be able to uh, publish a copy of uh, Helen Endicott's letter, which you provided to us. And of course, uh, people can go to our website, drrematruthreports.com, and they'll find in our blog uh, several entries that you have been kind enough to allow us to post where there's a, a considerable amount of information about these issues. Very important letters that you've written to the uh, Secretary General and others. So we, uh, we're we hoping to join with you and to make sure that everyone knows about these risks. Dr. Rima. And in fact, we have an action item. People can go to a, uh, a website and they can, at the click of a button, send a letter to the, uh, the head of the IOC so that we can say, Dr. Helen Caldicott is absolutely correct. Uh, Ambassador Morata is absolutely correct. An independent investigation team is essential to find out whether it is safe for the athletes, their families, the workers, uh, the visitors to come to Tokyo and be exposed to the Fukushima fallout. Because, of course, we know that it's not just Unit one, unit four. It's several other units are in very bad shape. And of course, one of the things that I want to ask you, um, Murata-san, is whether Fukushima Daini, 12 kilometers down the road, with four more nuclear reactors, is also posing the hazard that it appears to be. It, it looks as if two of the reactors out of the four reactors at the second Fukushima plant are also in uh, bad shape. Do you have information on that? Yes, you, you are correct. It, it, is, it was by luck that Fukushima escaped from the similar tragedy. 
because the the pumping seawater to cool for the cooling system uh, was about to be damaged, and uh, if it had if that had happened, the same tragedy could have happened. And uh, uh, I want to draw your attention to one uh, concrete problem, that is the difficulty of procuring workers in at the Fukushima Daiichi. They are paid daily 20,000 yen plus a risk uh, uh, surplus of 30,000 yen. Still, they are encountering serious uh, difficulties to procure workers. And this points to the incompatibility of the Olympic Games and the rehabilitation of the disaster area, and in particular, the coping with the consequences of the accident. This incompatibility is apparent. What is the situation right now in Japan regarding Fukushima fallout? The uh, the radioactive waste that has been burned in the open air all over Japan. What is the real situation? Not the denial, government official line, but what's real there? So there there is certain increasing restriction on the press. So the, it is very hard to get the correct picture of the actual state. But uh, rumors are saturating. Uh, this uh, influence is spreading uh, extremely widely. But I cannot give you concrete uh, numbers now. Well, one thing we know is that Professor Chris Busby of the European Radiation Risk Commission, uh, who is a colleague of ours and a very very fine scientist told us about a year ago, told uh, Ralph and General Burt and myself that he would no longer travel to Japan, Tokyo, Fukushima. He would no longer travel there because of the personal risk that he was not willing to expose himself to. Now, this is a man who is an expert in radiation risk, and I found that extraordinarily sobering. And we have become uh, increasingly convinced of that ourselves. Uh, Dr. Rima and General Bird have a, a good Geiger counter, um, which our foundation obtained for them. Uh, I have one as well. And so uh, I am on the east coast of the United States. Uh, General Bird and Dr. Rima are in Santiago de Chile, and we've been uh, measuring things with our Geiger counters, and we've come together uh, in California a uh, few times since the tragedy in Fukushima, and we've measured what we can there. And the consensus among the three of us is that there's been a steady increase in the amount of radiation that we're measuring in the eastern part of the United States and uh, especially on the west coast of the United States. But so far, there does not seem to be any noticeable increase in the southern hemisphere, where uh, where Dr. Rima and General Bird are, well, not in the very far right. far south. Right. Um, it, however, the fish from the Pacific, which swim deep in the Pacific, not the coastal fish, the literal ones, uh, not the clams and so on, but the fish that swim, like the tuna, um, those long distance fish indeed are showing radiation when I take my Geiger counter to their, uh, to the fish uh, in, in quest of information about whether I should consume it. And the answer is, if it swims through the deep Pacific, no, I should not consume it. Uh, seaweed that is used for supplements um, is coming back radioactive, so notably radioactive. So we're talking about um, Pacific contamination, despite the official denial. But let me ask you a question. If people are having trouble getting information because of the press censorship and because of the official policy of the Japanese government to make it unacceptable or painful to talk about radiation, radiation hazard, and Fukushima, how 
how is the information circulating? What is the uh, widespread information and discussion about this situation in Japan at this point? So, I think uh, as a citizen living in Tokyo, I have uh, the hopeful conviction that if maximum efforts are made to uh, cope with the consequences of the accident, the spreading of contamination can be brought under control. Uh, that is why it, it is extremely important that uh, the international community realize the gravity of the situation and do all to, uh, to create a situation in which Japan uh, co uh, concentrate all its efforts on this uh, uh, on the consequences of the accident. And this was one of the reasons of the, my plea for honorable retreat from the Tokyo Olympic Games. And uh, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, in everyday life in Tokyo, I do not feel any special danger. That is the uh, uh, actual state of affairs. But uh, the, the, the sense Fukushima is not under control. The spreading of contamination is much to be feared. That is why I am pleading for the maximum efforts to be made by Japan and the international community. Do you feel that there is any way that Japan or another country could pursue a nuclear power policy that would be safe? What do you mean, nuclear power policy? Do you, uh, there are energy policy? Is okay. there, I guess another way to put that is, is there any safe way to, to use nuclear power? I have a, a very strong position on this. The lesson of Fukushima is the possibility uh, of an accident that could uh, produce unacceptable consequences for human society. This possibility should be made completely zero. This is the point of view of Dr. Hans-Peter Dur, of a former director of the Max Planck Institute, as well as uh, Professor Ernst von Weizsäcker, and from this point of view, the world should uh, move to zero option. That is why I'm strongly supporting uh, President Obama's uh, vision and uh, trying to heighten it to the world without nuclear weapons and nuclear reactors. I would love to see a world without nuclear reactors. We were told by the... Um, former president or the CEO, former CEO of the world's second largest nuclear engineering company in a private meeting, he said, it's not a question of if a Fukushima will occur in the United States. It is a question of when. He said any nuclear reactor is inherently unstable and any nuclear reactor has the possibility of becoming of Fukushima. That was very sobering. But President Obama is is pursuing nuclear um, nuclear expansion, <clears throat> excuse me, as rapidly as he can. For example, ten days after Fukushima Daiichi occurred, he signed an accord with the president with the then president of Chile, President Piñera to build two nuclear reactors in the south of Chile. Those, the south of Chile is as seismically active as Japan. It is a completely insane thing to do. But before that, President Obama announced within about five days of the accident at Fukushima, after it occurred, that the United States would contract TEPCO, Tokyo Electric and Power Company, to build 23 new Mark II reactors, General Electric Mark II reactors, 
in the United States. So just between those two announcements, that's a total of 25 new nuclear reactors. China is moving to thorium fusion, far safer, but the United States is pushing for more nuclear reactors. This is, of course, a continuation of the seriousness of the situation. Ambassador, can you um, help us understand? Uh, you've said that that concerted efforts must be made to address the the results of the tragedy of the accident. What steps do you think should be taken in Japan? You know, uh, the proof that maximum efforts are not being made is the removal of uh, uh, fuel uh, uh, rod from the unit uh, uh, four. So far, uh, there is a working uh, system of eight hours a shift. But the uh, president of a company working on the spot telephoned me to urge me to quicken the pace by adopting 24 hours shift. And he said it is possible because the operation is not too complicated. But uh, for months, uh, I've been pleading for this, but no change as yet. So they could be removing the rods three times as fast with three eight-hour shifts <laughs> instead of just one shift a day. Murata-san, where are they putting these highly radioactive rods? We have heard that initially they were putting them in the bed of a nearby river. And so, of course, that was permanent contamination for the water. But I don't know if that's true or if that's still being done. They talk about removing these rods, but they don't talk about where they're going. Yeah, they are going to place it to a common pool. There's a common cooling pool. And uh, it is almost full, so they are removing already existing fuel rods to another place and put the fuel rods from the unit four there. It's not in the river. That is not true. My oh, gosh. good. I'm glad to hear that. You see, that's one of our problems. We Information is tightly controlled, and rumor uh, leaks and proliferates very rapidly. Yes. It's hard to know what is actually happening. Yes, but the cooling pool has the capacity of about 6,000 uh, fuel rods. And that, uh, of course, it's not ideal solution because the, the ideal solution will be putting them into directly into uh, dry casks. I understand that, that, that uh, I understand that there were several hundred uh, spent fuel rods that were actually in dry casks. Uh, at Fukushima when the uh, accident occurred and none of them were damaged. That's it. So the mm -hmm. ideal solution is dry casks. But I, that's why I say, uh, repeatedly uh, say that uh, it should be, uh, the, the system should be nationalized because uh, private companies cannot afford to pay too much money. And this is the, uh, at the root of the actual problem, because by economizing uh, the money for creating a, a shield wall around the site, uh, this contamination problem was brought in. If they had created that shield, it wouldn't have happened. And this is for economizing the financing. You know, this is, that's why I say, repeatedly say, it is, we, we, what we face is the crisis of a nation, as our, of the crisis of Japan, not the crisis of electric companies. Mm. Uh, Ralph, could you repeat the last part of what yes. Moran was saying? What the ambassador was saying is that he feels that the Japanese government has to take responsibility for the cleanup because private company by trying to cut corners or be uh, uh, excessively economical is not moving fast enough or resolving the problem fast enough that this is a, a problem that the uh, the public in general is concerned about and the company should step aside 
and uh, and allow the Japanese authorities to do so. Um, my do problem. Do you believe that the Japanese authorities can, in fact, uh, do the job that needs to be done because they are uh, they seem to me from a long distance away to be tied in a knot. Uh, bowing down so so aggressively to the nuclear industry. We're very concerned about the power of the nuclear industry to uh, uh, continue to cover up what's really happening. Uh, and, uh, and we hope that the political system in Japan is strong enough to be able to resist that power. But so far, we see no evidence. You know, uh, I'm uh, still uh, asserting the necessity of the full assumption of responsibility yeah. by the state. Right, yeah. I understand. Uh, well, nobody else can do it. I think General Burt wanted to say something. I did, or do. Uh, Maragazin, uh, how, in your estimation, how long will it take in order to uh, cap uh, Fukushima? Some estimate in the future. Uh, when when do we think that the uh, uh, problem will finally be capped enough so that uh, we're not spewing all of this uh, horrible poison uh, around the world? And radiation. And that's around. a huge question because yes, our it is. <laughs> our analysis. And by the way, by training. Um, General Burt is a, an industrial engineer, a chemical engineer. So um, our assumption is that unlike Chernobyl, uh, there is almost no known way using conventional technology to control Fukushima. Um, tell us if everything were going the best way possible, as fast as is reasonably prudently possible. How long do you think it would be before Fukushima were under control, or could it be brought under control? That's exactly the direction that my question was headed. Exactly. You know, uh, I'm not an expert, and uh, I cannot uh, answer uh, this question correctly. But you know, the commissioning that is starting takes uh, uh, 50 to 60 years, uh, and uh, yeah, we do not know in which states uh, are the uh, spell, uh, melt down fuel rods, and uh, what could what uh, could happen uh, to those melt down uh, fuel rods. So the question is extremely difficult to answer. But that is a very good analysis to treat it as as though it were being decommissioned. Now, did you say five well, or six years, 15, or did you say 15 years? 15 I didn't catch it. 60. 60, 60, 60, 60 years. Wow. More than but, that. Some say 100 years for wow. de decommissioning. But, wow. but that assumes that you can get in there and get a screwdriver in and, and, telling everybody. and move things and... and uh, uh, remove the core and so on, or blanket the core. The problems in Fukushima are the enormous destruction and the lack of either machinery or human tolerance for the levels of radiation there. But the, as soon as Fukushima occurred, the trustees, General Burke, Council Ralph, and I put our heads together and we said, knowing what we know, nothing that conventional technology has to offer can control this situation. It's very different from Chernobyl. And therefore, we said, let's go looking for those technologies that already exist, but are not being used, not being deployed to control the radiation. And we said, we don't know if those technologies exist, but we bet that they do. And so what we found was, for example, that worldwide there are 61 patented technologies. And a patent, as Ralph will tell us, <laughs> is a legal um, statement of veracity, a legal verification that something is real and works. There are 61 
patented technologies of which we know, which will control, reduce, and limit radiation in ways that would be appropriate to Fukushima. In addition, an Iranian physicist named Dr. Kesh, K-E-S-H, and you can look him up, uh, folks who are listening to this, at the Kesh Foundation, uh, sorry, Kesh, not the, but keshfoundation.com. Dr. Kesh made his revolutionary technology available to the world, free of charge, and to the government of Japan, free of charge, which would actually, if he is correct, remediate the radiation by changing the nuclear emissions status, by reducing the radioactivity uh, in a way that conventional physics does not understand yet, um, and thereby not only controlling but solving the Fukushima problem. Is he correct? I don't know. I'm not a nuclear or a quantum physicist, but to my knowledge, and this is a question for you, Murata-san, um, to my knowledge, nothing has come of either our introduction of the information about these patented technologies or uh, Dr. Kesh's technology. It's as if they have, the information has disappeared into a dark hole in the universe and been swallowed. Do you know of any hopeful technologies? I think uh, your point uh, will be uh, what should I approach by thinking this way. I have been arguing that uh, since we have experienced uh, a case unknown to humanity, we should mobilize on the widest scope uh, possible, human wisdom. And this necessitates interna internationalization, a true internationalization. So far, uh, partially, the time is resorting to international help, but this is not, uh, not at all uh, sufficient enough. And your, the case you point out could be studied in a new system of internationalization of coping with the accident. Uh, exactly. Yes. Don't you think? Indeed. Yes, absolutely. This is what we are hoping for. We find, and I want to ask you, you are a much more eminent person than we are. You have uh, been at the, uh, the, uh, the conclaves of the, uh, the world decision makers, and we are not. So when you present your information, when you communicate with the Pope, with uh, the Secretary uh, General, the Secretary General of the United Nations, and other uh, other members of the uh, supposed decision-making class, what happens to your information? What what kind of reception do you get? And how does the nuclear mafia, as you have called it, interact? You know, on this point, I, uh, I, I have a special idea. That is, the international nuclear dictatorship has limitless uh, power, as is evidenced in, in the study of the MIT that uh, pretended that uh, evacuation of residents would not uh, necessarily uh, uh, indispensable. And uh, also the editorial uh, uh, department of the New York Times is now uh, has, uh, shifting to admitting the usage of nuclear reactors and so forth. The influence of the nuclear, international nuclear dictatorship seems limitless. But I, to this I have an answer that in its way stands tsunamis, earthquakes, or uh, catastrophe, and especially 
spiritual values, in particular ethics. And with this, I call the will of heavens and the earth. We can be hopeful because this will of heavens and the earth, which is the history of law researched by philosophy, does not permit immoral state to last long. All its dictatorships are put an end. This is my way of thinking. This way of thinking gives hope to many conscientious citizens. Very, very interesting. Yeah. Uh, I would like to stay state for our listeners, so the listeners uh, understand where we're coming from. Ambassador Marata is the director of the Japan Society for Global Systems and Ethics. And what he's expressing to us right now is his vision for a global system and ethics. And there's a website uh, that you can go to uh, in English to learn more about this. And we've put that on the on the screen for those who are looking at the archive. But for the rest of you, let me give you the actual site. It's https colon double slash sites, that's S-I-T-E-S dot Google dot com forward slash site forward slash J-A-S-G-S-E English forward slash. Of course, the J-A-S-G-S-E stands for the Japan Society for Global System and Ethics. And you can Google that name, Japan Society for Global System and Ethics, and you will reach um, Murata-san's website. What you, are, what you are saying, Murata-san, is quite extraordinary. You're saying that there is a a balance in history that allows uh, dictatorships to be overthrown and suppressed and allows uh, alternative forms of governance and of human experience to rise once again. My fear is a technological one, because I think you are correct. I think history shows you to be correct. The will, as you put it, of heaven and earth uh, does not allow dictatorships and tyrannies to persist. They do an awful lot of damage, and they hurt an awful lot of people. But they have never before had technologies like the ones that the modern uh, corporate tyranny has, corporate state tyranny. They have nuclear technology, which is destroying our genome, and they have genetic engineering technology, which is destroying our genome. So to me, it's not only the cycle of history and the will of heaven and earth, which I think is exquisitely said, but it's also a question of a race a race to precipitate the end of the tyranny, the end of the corporatocracy, the end of the crony capitalist nuclear and genetic mafia before they kill us, before they render this planet completely unable to support anything other than the, the merest remnants of genetically destroyed life. So I think we're in a, a particularly um, urgent race. And the question is, how come more people and more governments don't see it? What do you, who is supporting your solutions? Who is, who agrees with you? Whom, whom have you found a resonance with, Murata san Yes, I will uh, give you a concrete uh, a uh, concrete case of support, uh, an extraordinary support I have recently obtained. It concerns my, uh, my paper uh, named the joint statement I prepared for uh, former Japanese Prime Minister Morihiro Hosokawa and uh, uh, former president of the Swiss Confederation, uh, Loyenberger, 
for who was minister for energy also. And uh, let me point out uh, the contents. Is uh, I think uh, I think the epoch maybe just a, a moment. Uh, I think Ambassador Murata has gone to retrieve a document. Um, so if our listeners this is are, the document. there we go. I, I have one here. If uh, you know, it concerns the reform of IAEA, International Atomic Energy Agency, which you know continue to minimize the accidents and minimize the dangers of radiation, as which is uh, known, universally known, the fact, and that no member state takes the initiative to revise the problematic uh, institution uh, whose mission is contradictory, because it, on one hand, its uh, 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 mission is preventing nuclear proliferation and on the other promoting nuclear power generation this is completely contradictory yes and uh, and this joint statement proposes the reform of it and also international control over the safety of existing nuclear plants must be strengthened and uh, and uh, this joint statement states at the outset, the lesson of Fukushima is that we should not use any scientific technology susceptible of causing such damage that human society cannot endure, irrespective of the figures of probability of accident, unless the risk is completely zero, as I said earlier. And uh, this statement supports also the creation of an international day of global ethics, and which is already being decided by World Federation of UNESCO Club. Very interesting. Uh, yes, and we urge that we must prepare to make the short-term sacrifices in our lifetime for the long-term safety of the Earth without nuclear energy. Natural and renewable energy could constitute the basis for a new civilization based on ethics and solidarity that respects the environment and the interests of future generations. Indeed. So and this statement has been already approved by uh, Prime Minister, former Prime Minister Hosokawa and former President Loyenberger. And I'm uh, uh, His Holiness, Pope Francis, and former President uh, of the United States, President Carter, are being approached. Very oh, good. Okay. Very good. You Very know, of good. course, we have uh, the, the the problem here is that the nuclear industry, this nuclear dictatorship, <clears throat> did not come about naturally, if you will. It did not come about by offering a uh, good product to people that they wanted, uh, but rather it came about because of political decisions for example, in the United States, nuclear power is an uninsurable risk. The insurance companies uh, who uh, uh, analyze risk in our society came to the conclusion that nuclear power was something that they could not insure, that there was no way of quantifying the risk so that it could be, uh, it could be planned for. Uh, very similar to um, the uh, uninsurable risk of vaccination uh, as well. Uh, and, uh, of course, in the United States, our National Congress passed a law exempting the nuclear industry from the risks of the damages that they might cause. But for that law, but for taking away from us as individuals and as a society the right to be to be compensated in the event of an accident, those industries would not exist. There is no, uh, it's impossible in a capitalist society for uh, a publicly traded company to invest in an uninsurable risk. And only by, by removing 
that industry from the normal controls of a, of a, of a capitalist society? Was it possible in the first place for the nuclear power industry to even exist? It was a political decision made as part of the Cold War to create the nuclear industry. Uh, and to me, uh, you are absolutely correct, uh, Mamrat Hassan, uh, only by moving in the direction of a zero nuclear industry can we expect to uh, have any sort of uh, uh, resolution to this very great risk. There is, an, there is another information bit that the retired CEO of the second largest nuclear engineering company in the world told us. He said, first of all, there is no way without twisted and deceptive uh, statistics and accounting, there is no way that a nuclear power plant anywhere in the world makes any sense in terms of the generation of electricity. The uh, citizens pay exorbitant uh, overrides on their electricity to compensate the companies for their expense because there will never be a, an economically efficient nuclear plant, not possible. Second of all, he said, there is no reason to ever generate electricity using nuclear power, even if somehow it made sense economically. We said, well, then what's the purpose of a nuclear power plant? And he said, every nuclear power plant in the world is a cover for the generation of weapons material for nuclear weapons. Um, that was quite a statement. Are you, um, uh, are you familiar with that line of reasoning, Murata-san? Or uh, is this something that, uh, that is not part of your, your thinking? Yeah, um, in Japan, uh, uh, there is often a uh, possibility evoked that uh, uh, Japan is heading for, uh, to become a nuclear state. But I think it's a pretext to continue using nuclear reactors because it is impossible and uh, uh, it couldn't uh, happen. Still, it can be exploited by uh, inflating nationalistic feelings. And uh, uh, as to the uh, commercial aspect of nuclear reactors, there is no longer any question that uh, uh, safety demands has already made it uh, not uh, uh, promising in future. And there is a one decisive uh, 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 reason why a nuclear industry cannot continue. That is the, what the Fukushima has shown to the whole world the danger of a nuclear terrorist. And this has already had played the playing a role in formulating national policy, the United States in particular. Don't you think? I think you're absolutely correct about absolutely. that. And absolutely. We... General Burt, what do you think? <clears throat> well, I was just wondering, having listened very carefully to what you said, uh, let's make this, uh, let's assume that you are absolutely correct. Therefore, why are we continuing on this trail? Why are we not going after uh, free energy? Why are we not going after other methods of uh, energy that are, first of all, a lot cheaper, a lot safer, and a lot more efficient than anything coming out of a nuclear reactor? Is there a sentiment that says exactly that in Japan? What are we doing? Why aren't we looking forward? Why are we looking in, in, into nuclear reactors for power? Is there, is there a popular sentiment of that sort? You know, uh, here comes my assertion that the crisis the world faces today is not economic, no monetary, but the crisis of civilization. There is no uh, consideration of, uh, uh, of the necessity of 
uh, changing civilization. And uh, uh, the starting point is the establishment of a global ethics. That is why I'm so eagerly uh, pleading for the holding of the United Nations Ethics Summit and also to, for the creation of International Day for Global Ethics. And I know from my personal experience, the nuclear dictatorship, uh, it tests. I believe, uh, I believe, Maratasan, that yeah. probably the very first, the very first rule of any of any global humanitarian ethics would have to be do no harm. Uh, and that, I think, is where we all start from. And uh, uh, General Burt, Dr. Rima, uh, Murata San, we have about five minutes left before the end of this section of the program. Let me, let me share with our readers, in support of everything that Ambassador Murata is saying, the Natural Solutions Foundation, and we've been uh, corresponding and we've been looking for ways to support this um, this ethical global response, uh, the Natural Solutions Foundation has created an action item. You can go to tinyurl.com forward slash Fukushima hope. That's tinyurl.com forward slash Fukushima hope. And when you click there, you will be able to submit a letter to the head of the International Olympic Committee and you will be able to join in the world cry for an independent commission to evaluate whether it is safe to bring athletes and workers and families and coaches and news people and so on to Tokyo in uh, six years when the 2020 Olympics is scheduled, or whether, in fact, the dangers are so great that Japan must not host the Olympics. Why is that important? It's a huge world event. And if an independent team finds what they will find, which is can't hold the Olympics there, the dangers are simply too great today, let alone six years from now, then the world will have no choice but to pay attention to the disaster that is Fukushima and the disaster that is nuclear power. And that, I know, is why you created this initiative. Right, Murata-san? Yes. So, uh, if this is the final uh, remark I can make. Indeed, sir. To read my message to President Obama. Uh, which I asked the former uh, American ambassador, uh, John V. Root. I quote, there is a trinity relationship for global ethics, maternal civilization, and true denuclearization. The UN Ethics Summit is the unavoidable entrance to your vision. Your precious support for it is ardently awaited. And I'm pinning hopes on the role of Ambassador Kennedy, whose father was maternal president, who gave birth to President Obama. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> that is that is excellent. You know, your um, your dedication to this issue is critically important to changing the world view. We do what we can. We tell people, we put out uh, articles and newsletters and so on, but it takes people from many walks of activity, many parts of the, the globe to come together and to support a global ethics and a global system that affirms life that cares for the planet, that cares for individuals, and is based on ethics, not power, and is based on um, a, a regard for humanity, not a disregard. And in that way, from my point of view, Ambassador Murata, you are a true hero. Can I say one? Absolutely. Yes. Um, I think. It is uh, absolutely, you're absolutely correct about the ethical path. 
unless this continent, unless this world gets on an ethical path, we're all done. We do. We must be on an ethical path, period. And I think it's very important to note that the globalists who want to depopulate the planet uh, use the language of ethics, they use the language of caretaking, they use the language of sustainability as if they meant it, when in fact what they mean is exactly the opposite. So we have to define our terms and talk about true enhancement of well-being, not suppression and depopulation. Indeed. Thank you very much, Ambassador Murata, the Japan Society for Global System and Ethics. This has been an extraordinary discussion. <laughs>